Christina, how you doing? All right, I got your work up right here. So I see you've got the process book. And the process book, I think, is coming along quite nicely. You've got the problem. I think your type is really big here. Really, really huge. Think of negative space. Think about how we can incorporate negative space into the, the composition as a design element. So I think that all points to the, the type being really super large. Um, you've got the problem listed over here, and then watch my cursor. I've got my cursor placed right on the T, so we go to the next page, and solution is shifted all the way over here. And also, we've got this. This is your left margin for your type, but we come over here, and the left margin has shift. That indicates to me that there's no grid being used for the presentation. I do recommend using a, a grid and really keeping things consistently placed. Target audience, uh, key demographics, ages 21 to 40. That's not a target audience. I mean, that you really, really want to get your target audience defined to a very high degree. In a lot of ways, this points to user empathy. If we don't understand our target audience, there's no way we can communicate with that target audience. So in, in target audience, I recommend, recommend including key demographic features. Um, age is only one of them. We need profession. We need the number of kids, married, single, urban or rural living, um, professional or service industry, a college educated or not, income, and the number of kids. Okay, it's really, really important that we get that developed. Now listen, at this point, I'm going to point you back to that treehouse example from our class. Um, that, I think it's really important at this point you start taking a look at some of the examples. I've left multiple examples for all of our assignments so far, including uh, many, many examples of the different uh, steps of the process book um, are in the course announcement. So I, I, I really want you to take a look at those. Uh, but this would not do well as a target audience page because you're just saying ages 21 to 40. So it's you really have to isolate that. You really want to get that target audience defined. Um, competitors, happy hour finder. I would recommend on your competition page, um, you want to show in your competitive analysis, you want to name the comp competitor, give the pros and cons of the functionality and features of their app, the visual design of their app, and the usability of their app. Also show images of their app interface. Okay. Then in your a uh, summary for a competitive analysis, talk about what your app does that these don't. Otherwise, we're just regurgitating and reiterating what's already been, been done. We want an original, new, and fresh ideas, right? So it's really important that you differentiate your app from the other apps. And in the competitive analysis page, go ahead and tell us what, what features and functions your app has that the others don't. Personas. Um, this is good. Personas are good. She's a female, 21. He's 21, male, no good. He's a student. Yeah, you've got two students, a male and female, both the same age. You want your personas to be as diverse as you possibly can. Okay, so in other words, theoretically, a 21-year-old female student would be the same group as a 21-year-old um, st male student. All right. So I know it's asking us to use a little bit of imagination and to apply some some liberties in terms of um, uh, characteristic attributes of the persona. But we the personas are to represent basically a group. OK, so you want to keep them as diverse as possible. Uh, so in other words, you have a, a, a 35 year old nurse. OK, divorced. Does she have kids? Remember, do you want to incorporate a lot of your uh, demographic information into your uh, definition of your persona? Um, so we go from the personas to the scenarios. Watch your spelling. Watch your spelling. That's working. That's misspelled. Okay, so here's the scenario. And then what I would do over here is I, I think the best way to sketch out a scenario is a two-page sketch, two-part sketch. So in other words, in the first sketch, storyboard sketch, you sketch out the scenario without the app. Problem. Then right under it, you sketch out the app, the, the problem with the app. No problem, right? And label your scenarios. So over here, you could say, Sonny is working and wants to go to happy hour, but can't find a good happy hour, et cetera, et cetera. So by using the app, blah, 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 and describe that. So you want to describe each of your thing, your uh, scenarios. Now, you want, you've got four personas. We only really need three, but four is fine. Um, you want a storyboard and scenario each of your personas as well. Okay, wireframe sketches, good. Okay, storyboards. I don't know how this storyboard, where this fits. 
Okay, storyboards are to represent a specific scenario in a, a specific, uh, excuse me, storyboards are meant to represent a specific persona in a specific scenario. Okay, so this wouldn't sit alone, the storyboards. This would be grouped with your personas and scenarios, all right? Um, then we have wireframe sketches. Okay, so I'm talking a lot about your, um, by the way, these are really, really underdeveloped. I mean, you've got beer, wine shots, and then nothing. There's no back buttons. There's no home buttons. There's no global navigation. So you really, really, I mean, go to one of the competitive apps and see how it's built and use it for reference. Um, okay, so I've talked about the process book. The problem I'm having here is that we don't have any indication of a clickable prototype whatsoever. So we, we need that. We need that. We, we got to get that clickable prototype. Now, if you go over into the course announcements right here in this click through prototype example, this shows you exactly how to set up a clickable PDF prototype uh, using um, uh, using uh, uh, InDesign and then, and then exporting to PDF. So it's really easy to do. And the other option, of course, is to use um, Adobe XD. But we do need a clickable prototype to be submitted along with your process book, which I don't have. Additionally, process book due next week. My recommendation is to go through, again, all the, in the course announcements, I do have the requirements listed for the final process book. So you really, really want to make sure that all of those are included. Okay, as we are becoming a little bit more accustomed to being quarantined and being alone, et cetera, et cetera, and changing our workflows and habits, um, I was pretty good in the first two weeks about keeping all of that into consideration. And I am trying to work with every student as, as best I can, given the limitations that we are all imposed, uh, are, are imposed upon all of us. And so, but right now, I mean, we're two weeks in, so I'm going to start getting a little bit more stringent in my grading, just so you know. So I'm saying that because I want you to make sure that all of the requirements are included in the process book. Okay. And again, you can go to the course announcements and take a look at those requirements. I've got them right here. And this is, uh, if you want to take a screenshot of this, this is what's required. Okay. Um, the stuff in the asterisk is, is recommended, but not required. So all of that is fair game for grading. So make sure all of that is included in your final process book. And of course, let's get that use. Let's get that uh, clickable prototype completed. That's really, really important. I mean, it's basically the nuts and bolts of the class uh, being user prototyping. We definitely have to use include a user prototype, right? Makes sense, right? All right, uh, Christina, thank you very much. Um, things are coming along. I know you had some some extreme difficulties at first, but uh, uh, you're, you're coming along nicely. We, we still have a lot of work to do, Christina. I'm not going to lie to you. So um, we really got to put the pedal to the metal here, so to speak, because we're going to be starting our next project next week, which is a group project. So um, we want to wrap this project up before we start that. Okay, great. Fantastic. Christina, thank you very much. Any questions at all, please let me know. Thanks.